Well, so we will proceed. And we have been uh, discussing about factors that affect uh, our relationships uh, or transactions with other businesses. And we saw that these factors could be divided into two uh, categories. And the first one is characteristics of the organizations that we are dealing with. But also then the second one is characteristics of the individuals that we are dealing with, or individuals that are representing those organizations. But this, before I proceed with this, I, I have an announcement regarding the assignment. The original plan, if you look at the course schedule, the, the tentative course schedule, we, uh, I said we would have a presentation, and that would, was scheduled to be next week. But I think instead of having two presentations, that is next week and at the end of the second assignment, we will have just one presentation. That is when the whole thing is combined, when you, we have developed the, the whole business uh, plan, and then each group will have an opportunity to present uh, their entire uh, assignment or the entire plan, rather than just presenting the business idea and do another presentation later. Which means next week we will not have those presentations, and instead, this week uh, on Friday, I will release uh, part A of uh, second assignment. So we will continue to work on that, and all the presentations will be done at the end of the semester. Is that okay? So we proceed. And regard, speaking about uh, uh, business uh, uh, clients, just as we talked about uh, customer segmentation when we discussed about the business microenvironment, business clients can also be categorized based on their characteristics. And as we said when, when we discussed about uh, consumer markets, these characteristics will determine their needs, preferences, and thereby helping us to determine how we should serve uh, these customers. So some of the factors that you need to consider when you, 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 you uh, segment your uh, business clients could be uh, the percentage of companies with, with access, that is accessibility to, uh, to the internet, Although we know today most companies have uh, access to the internet, but this access differs from organization to organization. Some of them have limited access and some of them have, uh, they are completely into it. So you need to determine uh, to what extent the, 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 the business clients you are targeting have access to, to the internet and to what extent are they willing to purchase your services online, just as w what we discussed with consumers. And based on this, uh, uh, the business use of internet, you could have two types of businesses. There are those that uh, use internet mainly for research, that when they are seeking suppliers or when they are trying to find information about products that they are interested in buying. And then they perform the transactions offline. But also you have companies that uh, completely uh, execute their transactions on online, that they do the search and complete the, or, or all other uh, activities for this necessary for the transaction uh, online. So you, you need to, to, to know the, the characteristics of the, the, the business that you are dealing with and to what extent do they, have they adapted the, the technology? How do they use it? And how willing are they uh, in accessing your services or in completing your transactions online? So if you have, say, a consulting business, what kind of relationship do your uh, clients would like to have? Is it okay for them to have uh, interaction just online, 
or do they need a more personal I interaction? If it's uh, services, uh, say documents, are they willing to receive the, the document, all the necessary documents for the transaction online, or do they still uh, would like to have the hard copies of what you are, uh, the, of the tra that are related to the tr to the transaction? So you you need to uh, know what kind of uh, service they would like and how um, willing are they to interact with you. Uh, online. Adoption of digital business uh, by businesses. Uh, so uh, uh, as I, I said, just like consumers, businesses also face challenges when it comes to adoption of digital uh, technologies. And because of that, the, the extent to which co uh, companies uh, adopt uh, digital technologies differ from uh, uh, companies to, to, to companies. So depending on the type of the companies, say whether it's a large corporation or whether it's a small or medium uh, enterprise, this determines what kind of applications are they willing uh, to, to use uh, when it comes to digital uh, business. So there are some companies that are quite advanced when it comes to application of technology and they are already into enterprise uh, resource uh, planning. They have systems like uh, SAP or they have a system, customer relationship, man uh, customer relation ma relationship management systems that are in place. But not all, ca uh, all ca organizations are, have reached that level. So this depends on the organization. And this determines the kind of relationship that you will have with this business uh, class. Here are statistics that are showing the level of uh, digital technology adoption by uh, companies. And these are st statistics are from 2012. So today, the situation might change. But uh, the, the statistics uh, save to illustrate the fact that uh, different organizations will have different level of uh, adoption. So when it comes to business uh, relationships, whether with uh, your suppliers or with your distributors, dis distributors you need to consider uh, the level of uh, technology that they, they, might, they may have achieved. So a supplier that has uh, in place digital uh, technology say has a, an information system that is compatible to yours or that is willing to integrate the information system to, to yours will make it a lot more easier to you in terms of uh, cost saving and convenience when it comes to uh, transactions. But you know, the most important thing is you need to understand that different uh, organizations might, may uh, have attained different levels of digital technologies. And when you are dealing with them, you need to consider uh, these factors. So now we will discuss uh, privacy and trust in e-commerce. As I said earlier, this is one of the factors that inhibits uh, individuals' willingness to use services online, that people are very much concerned about their uh, privacy and they have very little trust on uh, online channels. So we'll have a discussion on that and the, its impact uh, on uh, digital businesses. So some key te terminologies. First uh, is ethics. Uh, some of you probably have had classes about ethics. Can somebody help us to define what ethics is? Someone can give it a try? Ethics? Hmm? So we are talking about uh, ethical standards, so ethics. And what we say, these are personal business practices or behavior generally considered acceptable by the society. So it's all about doing the right thing. 
And in this case, e-commerce has a lot to do with ethics, that what is uh, acceptable in a society and what, what is not uh, acceptable. And it's very important, given the kind of concerns people have when it comes to, to, to privacy uh, issues. And consumer privacy is a key ethical issue that affects all types of online businesses. Last week, we discussed the uh, Facebook business case. And one of the uh, factors that Facebook uh, identify in the case is the privacy concerns, that this is one of the things that they, they see as a, a major challenge that they have to work on. But in fact, privacy concerns is not just a challenge to Facebook but it's a challenge to all online businesses. So if you are thinking about starting an online business, you need to think about how you will address consumer concerns about privacy. And what we say about privacy is privacy is the moral right of individuals to avoid in intrusion and in their personal affairs. So we all have a personal space that uh, you would not other people you would not like other people to intrude. There are things that uh, you would like to keep for yourself. Uh, and the internet or online services pose the, 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 the threat to this privacy because it provides opportunity for other people to intrude into our, our personal lives or into our personal space that we otherwise we wouldn't like other people to, to, to intrude. So privacy could be either, it, has, it may have to do with the personal identifying uh, information or non-personal identifying information, such as visitor uh, behavior or on a website. So I will talk a little bit about uh, personal identifying information. So when we talk about this uh, personal space that you would not uh, like other people to, to in intrude, we are talking about uh, at two levels. Uh, one is uh, things, uh, the information that it would help other people to uh, identify you. And they may use that information uh, against you. So this starts with the basic information, uh, such as your uh, physical address, your email address, uh, your age. But also, it, it goes uh, beyond that to non personal identifying information, such as your behavior, your preferences, your interests. And when it comes to uh, uh, privacy, uh, for uh, like personal identifying information, such as our uh, identities, and as well as non personal uh, identifying info information. Most of us are quite concerned when it comes to, to, to online uh, services. These are information that you, we would not like to, to disclose to other people. And in fact, for good reasons, because not everybody out there is as honest as we are. Some other people may use it for malicious pur purposes. They, they may misuse the, the, the information that they have about us. So there are five types of uh, information that you, you need to consider when you, you have uh, online uh, businesses. These are key types of information that you, you have to be careful about when you're handling. And the first one is contact information. And this falls in the category of uh, uh, personal uh, identifying information. Uh, this includes uh, the name of the person, their postal address, email address whatever information that can help identify the, the individual. And also you have profile information. Uh, it's quite common these days when we subscribe to uh, online services, they would ask us uh, for a number of information and this to, to establish our profiles. And this could be uh, your sex, your social group, I mean, dem demographic uh, uh, characteristics. And this is, this type of information that is entrusted to you is sensitive and you, you, you need to be careful when you are handling uh, this type of information. Uh, we will discuss later uh, eight principles 
about handling the information we receive about our, uh, from our consumers. But also, it could be information about uh, usage of the consumers when they are on our platform. Uh, as I said earlier, there are the tools uh, these days that can track behavior of the consumers when they are on the website. And this is the information that is at our disposal. I mean, you as a business manager, you have access to this information. And you need to be careful because this is private information and you cannot uh, disclose it. Or disclosure of it can result into damage or unpleasant experiences to the consumers. But also, you have uh, behavior information on a single site. Uh, that is uh, the behavior of, of the consumer on your site. And another one is behavior of consumers across multiple sites. Uh, last time, we, we, we talked about uh, past, uh, path to purchase and consumer uh, uh, buying journey or consumer journey, uh, briefly. That is the kind of uh, all the, the steps that consumers go through before they purchase our products. Or path to purchase, that is the different size that consumers go through before they come to our website. And it's possible to track uh, this journey, that to, to track all the, the websites that uh, a consumer has gone through before they came to our site. So whether it's uh, uh, someone searched for, for, your pro for a product in, in a search engine and the search engine brought some links and they followed the links, probably the link w was not directly to a website, it was to a 30 part website and finally they found a link to your website. So all, all this process can be tracked and you can have information about uh, all, all the process that uh, a consumer has gone through before they came to your website. And this is uh, private information that you, you need to handle uh, carefully. So there are seven questions that you need to ask yourself, or there are question, uh, seven ethical issues that you need to consider when it, when it comes to handling private uh, information or when it comes to managing uh, privacy of your consumers. So the first and uh, foremost is the privacy and that, uh, that is we say what information is held about the individual. What kind of uh, information uh, do you collect from your consumers? Uh, we will discuss uh, after this slide what kind of information you should collect and how you should collect it. But now we will just go through the, the, the ethical issues that you need to uh, put into consideration when it comes to management of privacy. And then you have to think about accuracy. Is the information that you collect accurate? Property, who owns it? And how can ownership be transferred? When you collect the information, or the type of information you are collecting, who is the owner? And how can you transfer the, the, the ownership? We will see in a couple of con uh, minutes when we in a couple of seconds when we discuss the different principles that you need uh, to, to adhere to. And then you need to ask about yourself about accessibility. Who can access the, 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 the information? And under which conditions can they access this information? And in addition to those, you have three more factors. And the one is transparency. If you're collecting information about your consumers, are they aware? of the, uh, what you are doing. You, did you disclose to your consumers that you are collecting this type of information and for which purpose? And then you have security issues. How are you going to protect uh, the, the information? And lastly is the, the liability. Who is responsible in case uh, the, the, the information or the data is abused? So here are the principles when it comes to handling data or information that we collect uh, from our consumers. We have eight principles. And the first one is you need to, the uh, to process the information fairly and lawfully. This means that you need to exercise uh, necessary 
uh, measures or you need to implement necessary m measures to make sure that the information uh, you, you collect is fairly and lawfully uh, processed. And some of the uh, measures that you need to take is you need to appoint an individual in your organization that will be specifically uh, responsible for managing the, the information collected from your, uh, your um, uh, consumers. And of course, depending on the size of your organization. Larger organizations are able to employ people that are specifically working for on this task. But if you have a, a small organization with a limited budget, probably it might be responsible to someone that is also responsible uh, with other uh, uh, tasks. But uh, the most important thing is there must be an individual in, a, in, a, in the organization that takes care of the information collected from, the, uh, from consumers. And also you need to uh, provide details on how data subjects can contact uh, the, the data controller. Data subjects in this case are the people from whom we collect uh, the, the information. So usually you, you need to, to be open to those that you are collecting the information and provide, make, it, make it very explicit how the people that provide, your, uh, provide information to you can con contact the person responsible for managing the information. And this is... Uh, for an obvious reason that sometimes we may no longer wish to have a, a certain organization keep our organization. So it should be easy for someone to contact uh, your organization and say, hey, I want to be out of this. So uh, get rid of my information. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to have any my, my information in your database. So make it easy for people to contact the person responsible for managing uh, the, the information. The third factor is consent must be sought from data subjects that people have to be asked and they have to be willing that their information will be collected and kept for a particular purpose. So you need to ask consumer. Whenever you collect any information about your consumers, you need to ask for their consent. They need to approve that they are willing to give them uh, information to you. And when it comes to sensitive uh, information, you need to exercise even uh, extra care. And when we talked about uh, sensitive information, this is about individuals' political opinions, religious uh, beliefs, ethnic origin, health condition, sexual orientation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are type of information that are very uh, sensitive. And we know that sometimes people could be discriminated based on this uh, type of attributes, whether uh, someone has a sexual orientation that other people think is not right, or people have a certain health condition, or you are of a certain ethnic origin, or you have different religious beliefs. So th these are sensitive I information, and you need to be careful when it, it comes to handling this uh, information. So. If you disclose this information to, uh, to uh, parties that are not related to the, uh, uh, your transaction, that it, may, it may have consequences uh, that were not uh, uh, desirable or intended. The second factor is processing the information for limited purposes. We said earlier that you need to inform your consumers what kind of information you are collecting from them and why you are collecting that information. So this principle requires you to use that information only for the purpose for which you collected the information. So if you told your consumers that this information will only be used for facilitating the transaction, then you are not expected to use this information for something else. So this is a, a principle that you need to, uh, to, to abide by. And only to, to state how long this information will be kept. Uh, so this goes on and on with the uh, purpose for which the information uh, was collected. So you need to be very explicit why you are collecting the information, how long uh, you, will be, uh, you will keep uh, the, the, the information. And in case you, will, you, you, need, you intend to, to pass on the information to a third party, you need to declare this. I think uh, some of us have uh, experience when you buy air ticket from airlines. Uh, if you're registering your information for the first time, at the end of the, uh, like when you're filling the form, they might ask you, uh, are you willing, uh, 
or do you allow us to share this information with third parties? And you can say no or uh, yes. And this is what we are talking about, is that if you intend to use the, the information uh, or you intend to pass it on to other uh, parties, you need, you know, your consumers have to be aware of this. Because the information we provide to, 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 uh, to companies, as we said uh, in the previous lecture, is quite useful. People can use it for marketing purposes. So actually, literally, companies can sell this information. But before you do that, you need to uh, ask uh, uh, the people that from whom you are collecting the information, and they have to approve that. The third principle is uh, the information has to be adequate, relevant, and not excessive. So basically, with this principle is do not collect information that you do not need for, 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 for the purpose of the relationship between you and the consumer. So collect only the information that is relevant uh, for, for, for the transaction. So if information such as uh, religious uh, beliefs of, of an individual is not needed for uh, completing a transaction, then you don't need to collect that information. Mm -hmm. If information about sexual orientation of your consumer is not relevant for the transaction, then you don't need uh, to collect this information. So collect only the information that is relevant for the purpose, uh, for, for the kind of relationship or for the transaction that you're performing. The fourth principle is always keep accurate information. And, and this is important for uh, both sides, that you need to keep uh, accurate, correct information at any uh, time. And this is uh, 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 important because if the relationship between you and your consumers is uh, ongoing, then any transaction that is performed based on wrong information may be invalid or it may result into unnecessary extra costs. Simple example, imagine someone provided their address uh, three years ago, and they moved to another location, and they didn't change that address. They buy stuff from you, and you send it to the former address. Of course, later on, you, you, you will have to resend the pack or whatever, but also, People change status, right, from time to time. We change preferences, we change interest. So it's uh, important to uh, always update the, the information you keep about your, your, your uh, consumers. The fifth uh, principle is that you don't need to keep the, the information longer than uh, necessary. So keep the information as long as y you need it. And when you don't need the information, remove it. And of course, this is uh, important in, in both uh, to, to the consumer as well as to the business. To the business, you, you don't need to fill your service with information that you, you, you don't need. But also, we know that when you keep information that you really don't need, probably even the amount of precaution that you take will be less. And it's likely that this information could be exposed, not uh, intentionally, but simply because uh, necessary measures were not uh, taken to protect it, simply because uh, uh, it's not uh, necessary or not, it's not important anymore. But other people could get hold of this information and misuse it. So in recognition of the fact that information about consumers we keep is sensitive, whenever you don't need it, get rid of it. The sixth uh, uh, principle is that you need to process the information in accordance with the data subject's uh, rights. Data subject, in this case, the person that is giving the information to, to, to you. These people uh, have right to the information that uh, they, are, they are giving to you. And there are a couple of things that you need to observe. One of them is uh, data subject has the right to request a copy of their personal uh, data. And this is known as subject access to uh, 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 subject access request. So at any time, if your consumers or any person that has given you their private data, they want to have a copy of uh, all the information that they have given you, they have right to that. And in case this costs uh, money, then it should be 
affordable to the person uh, to, to pay. So which means you cannot uh, impose a high fee for consumer to obtain a copy of, the, uh, of their personal data. So it should be possible for consumers to ask a copy, to know exactly what you are keeping, or what kind of information you are keeping about them. And second, uh, the use of pro and or use of uh, or processing of this uh, information should not cause damage or distress uh, to to the uh, data subjects or in this case to, to your consumers. Whatever you are going to use with the information that you are giving, uh, make sure that this use will not result into harassment or any unpleasant uh, experience uh, to to your uh, consumers. Another uh, aspect you need to consider is that uh, data processing should not result into data subjects automatic decision uh, taking. You cannot uh, use the, the, the information to automatically uh, get consumers to perform certain transactions without their uh, consent. So usually when you, you, you buy certain services, uh, it's, co it's common that in the end they might uh, ask you um, uh, are, are you like? Uh, would you like a, a ref an automatic refill uh, next time when, when you are, say you are uh, you are out of credit? Should we refill it automatically? They ask that because you cannot force people to buy from your uh, uh, you, to buy your services. So always people have to be willing. Uh, they have to, be, uh, to 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 have their own consent when it comes to. Uh, buying or to using your your, your 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 services, so you should convince people to use uh, your services or your products through the uh, 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 value proposition, and you cannot use technology to bind people into uh, dealing with you. So you have to avoid such uh, default uh, or uh, automated uh, uh, transactions. Make it possible for consumers to opt out. This is what uh, it's like. What uh, I, I talked about, uh, in a few seconds ago, that it, it should be possible for people to opt out from your your, your services. That if they want uh, to 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 get away, to get rid of you, it should be possible for them. So, if for instance they you have subscribed to uh, antivirus uh, software, then it should be easy for you. In case next year you want to get another uh, uh, software, it should be easy f for you to, to, to opt out the service. And this applies to any other uh, service, that if people are buying from you and they want to, to, to get rid of you, to, to change uh, uh, seller or supplier, it should be easy for them to do that. Use the data for marketing purposes only after asking for data subjects consent. And this is uh, like what I've said, that uh, the information we collect could be used for marketing purposes. But it's important that if you want to use any information uh, you have collected from your, from your consumers for marketing uh, purposes, ask for you their approval. And the seventh one is uh, security, that you, you need to take necessary measures to make sure that whatever information you are collecting is safe. And you have to protect it against uh, un unauthorized or unlawful processing that other people, other, uh, say, third parties cannot have access to, to it. You have to protect it uh, against accidents or destruction or damage. And the eighth principle is that you cannot transfer this information to countries that uh, do not have adequate protection. So this is quite common for uh, uh, multinational companies. If you're operating in different countries, then it's possible that the, the information you collect about consumers uh, could be also uh, made available to, to your operations in other countries. This principle says that you, you cannot transfer information uh, in countries where uh, protection measures or regulations are not as sound as in the country where you are uh, you are operating. So, in European countries, the, these principles are pretty much uh, standardized, and it could be quite safe to transfer data from one European country to to another. But when you go outside, 
Europe, uh, the regulations and may, uh, security measures may not be the same. So you have to be careful if you are, this information is available in those uh, countries. It means that third parties can easily uh, access the, 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 the information and thereby compromising this, your security uh, measures or uh, com comprom compromising uh, the, the, the uh, uh, data rights of your, uh, your consumers. Now, besides uh, those uh, eight principles, there are other aspects that you need to, uh, to consider when you are doing online uh, business. And the first one is about, uh, it has to do with marketing your uh, e-commerce. And one is the domain name re registration. And this is the address through which people can uh, uh, identify your, your, your site. And we know that uh, it's uh, quite important uh, uh, for your online presence because this is like in offline context, uh, it's a physical uh, address that uh, helps people to, to address your business. But uh, in the online space, it's uh, the domain name uh, that helps uh, consumers identify. So you have to be careful, especially when it comes to uh, registering a new domain name. There are uh, di a dispute may arise if you use a name that another company already uh, uses. So whenever you uh, identify a name, you have to check that this name is not used by another company, and you have to register the domain name of your, your company. Closely related to that is the, 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 the use of meta tags in search engine optimization. Uh, we, we talked about this. Uh, uh, we talked about search engine uh, optimization, and I say this is uh, the process of increasing your visibility on the internet uh, through uh, organic search uh, results. That when people enter certain search uh, terms on the internet, then you by doing search engine optimization, you increase your possibility uh, to appear prominent on the uh, search. Results. Now, what, this ha uh, what happens with this is sometimes uh, companies or some, uh, s some online enterprises may use uh, certain uh, se search uh, terms because it's possible I I to define meta tags. That is, the words that you would like when people are searching on the internet should be connected to your, to your business. So you can say, for instance, you want when people enter, say, shoes, then you would like your, your, your business to appear prominent on the uh, search engine results. But shoes is just one example, but sometimes a company may use a term that is related to the competitor. So for instance, uh, I may have, a, 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 I may start an online retailer and I can define Zalando as one of my search terms. So whenever people uh, search for Zalando, then my business will show up. Right now, this is unethical. You you cannot uh, do that. You cannot uh, diverge customers from other uh, 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 businesses uh, by using these uh, technology uh, applications. So you need to be careful, and this applies both ways. You you need to refrain from uh, using uh, other uh, companies, uh, um, say profiles uh, or. Uh, uh, identities, but also you need to make sure from time to time that you do on, um, online scanning to make sure that other people are not misusing uh, uh, the name of your, your, your business. And um, there are tools that uh, you, you, you can use to, to, to do that. For instance, uh, Google uh, Alerts. Uh, this is a, a tool that uh, allows you uh, to track uh, comments or uh, online mentions that uh, happen online regarding your, your, your business. But also, you have the Copyscape. This is used to locate duplicates of content that may arise from you, plagiarism. So sometimes you may have uh, created very original content on your website, and some people may steal it and put it to their website as if it was theirs. Uh, this is 
plagiarism. So this uh, website helps you from time to time to track if your content appears elsewhere on the net. And it's uh, quite important because uh, uh, the internet makes it quite easy for people to steal from uh, other people's uh, stuff. So you need to uh, keep on tracking it. But, uh, and this goes both ways. You need to know that if you're stealing from other people's uh, sites, you might be uh, I found out that people will find out and they will take measures against you. But also, you can also use these tools uh, to, to find out if people are stealing your, your, your content. Another factor that you need to uh, consider is uh, online contracts. That wh whenever we are affecting uh, transactions, we enter into contracts uh, with our consumers. So you, you need to consider uh, the relevant uh, legal frameworks that bind these con uh, uh, contracts. That is the agreement of uh, exchange between you and your consumers. In Europe, uh, quite early, they made a, a, an initiative to declare what they call a country of origin. And with this, it means that if a, uh, an exchange is a, uh, executing between a seller and a buyer, then uh, the law for the contract will be that where the mercant is located. So if you are in Norway and you are selling to someone in Netherlands, then the law applicable is that of Norway. And that is what we call country of origin principle. And a lot of things uh, happen in the course of uh, transactions that we, we, we make online. Things ca can go wrong. The system might fail. There might be errors in the system. and what you, you are encouraged to have disclaimers to, to, to protect yourself when you are executing this um, uh, tr transaction. And you need to have uh, terms and conditions. And these are provisions about timing of uh, delivery, what happens in case of damage, loss of goods. And this uh, have to be in a way that is, uh, makes it convenient for you to execute the uh, uh, transaction. So when you buy things, for instance, in uh, Amazon, in most cases, they would deliver it uh, in two or three weeks. But usually, the timing uh, provided in the contract is quite long. That provides uh, 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 a possibility for them. In, in case anything happens in, in the course of uh, shipping the, the item, they have uh, enough uh, time space in which they can deliver. Uh, 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 the product. But because if they committed themselves, say, to three days uh, uh, delivery time and they cannot deliver on that, it means that you, you can sue them for breaching the contract because that's one of the things that you, you, you agreed. So you need to consider what terms and conditions you uh, offer your uh, consumers and whether you are able to, to meet that. And another aspect is uh, it has to do with uh, payments that uh, you need to decide wi uh, how the, your consumers will make uh, payments and uh, which parties will be involved in these uh, payments. Uh, so usually it's uh, you as the, the service uh, provider or the seller. And also we have uh, 30 parties that are facilitating the transactions or payments. Uh, we have uh, credit card issuers and, of course, uh, the, the buyer. So you need to be very clear about the responsibility or the liability of each one of these uh, parties. Authenticating contracts concluded over the Internet. On the Internet, uh, people can pretend to be whoever they are. And it's your responsibility to make sure that you identify or you establish uh, uh, the, the identity of the person that you are uh, transacting with. So you need to have measures in place that will guarantee that the person that is the, you, with whom you are doing the transaction is actually the person that you should be transacting with. because. If you have uh, 
uh, weak measures. We, we know that people are, are able to access uh, identities and information about other people. Imagine if your site uh, is able to approve a payment only if someone provides the, the digits from the credit card. It means that if anyone uh, picks a, a, a anybody else's uh, a credit card, they can uh, effect a transaction uh, on your site. And that's, uh, uh, I, I would say, dangerous because uh, we know that people lose credit cards and uh, sometimes uh, unintentionally our identities may be exposed to people that we, we didn't like, they should have our, our identities. But as a uh, business manager, you need to have measures in place to make sure that appropriate measures, uh, 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 controls are in place, making sure that people that are transacting with your website are only those who are actually supposed to do so. So you simply have to establish the, the identity of the people you are transacting with. And also you have uh, email uh, marketing, uh, the, and this is mostly it has to do with uh, spams and, uh, and, and uh, unsolicited uh, emails or un unwanted emails that uh, we receive from time to time. But also it could be the type of information that uh, we, 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 we share through uh, emails. So the important thing is that you need to respect other people's uh, privacy. And if people are not in, interested or they, have, uh, they are not willing to receive information or commercial or marketing uh, uh, information for that matter, then you shouldn't do that. And there are laws, of course, uh, we will discuss this uh, next time. And now uh, we use the Norwegian legal uh, framework to, to discuss the kind, di different laws that uh, uh, are guiding uh, this type of uh, uh, marketing activity, whether it's uh, SMS uh, ma marketing or email uh, marketing. So it's four o'clock. Uh, I think I will stop here. We will proceed uh, on Friday.